Hello, I'm Val and today I want to invite you to come and have breakfast. Now I'm not a great cook, well apart from rosy baked chicken, upside down lemon pudding and ice cream that is, and pancakes, breakfast pancakes, breakfast pancakes with maple syrup. I have them every Saturday morning. In fact, I'm a pancake expert. But maybe that's because I practice so often, or maybe it's because of the great recipe that I use. It's an old one. It's from Philip Harbin. And those of you who are the same vintage as me may remember that name. He was the first television cook, the Mary Berry of the 1950s. And the recipe is easy to remember. It's just one, three, five. One egg, preferably a large one. Three ounces, or more simply, three heaped dessert spoonfuls of plain flour and five ounces of milk. I've no idea how many mils that is because I use an ancient measuring jug along with the ancient recipe. And a dash of salt, whip it all up and leave overnight. Easy. So, as soon as the original lockdown was lifted, I started inviting friends to come and have breakfast. Pancakes with me on Saturdays. Sadly, only two people managed to share my scrumptious crepes before such simple pleasures were once again denied us. By now, you are perhaps wondering why I'm waffling on about pancakes and breakfast. Well, I was running out of ideas to encourage my house group a straight Bible studies didn't seem to be hitting the mark. The members preferred to chat instead. Something I could and perhaps should have anticipated. So I came up with the idea for one week of suggesting that each one should come prepared to share a favourite meal or recipe and alongside that a Bible passage about food. Guess what I chose? Come and have breakfast. The story is found in John's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. Jesus, who had recently risen from the dead, had previously told his disciples that he would meet them in Galilee. But when they arrived there, they didn't immediately find him. <coughs> so they decided to go fishing on the lake. But even though they were out all night, they didn't catch anything. <coughs> so early next morning, Probably tired, cold, fed up and hungry, they were about to give up when they spied somebody on the shore who hailed them and suggested they should cast their nets on the other side. When they did that, amazingly, they discovered a huge shoal of fish. Then John recognised the mystery man on the shore as Jesus. And Peter, being Peter, immediately jumped out of the boat, leaving the others to haul in the catch. More slowly, the others brought the boat to the shore and landed the bumper catch. All 153 fishes. One, five, three. That was when Jesus invited them to come and have breakfast. Accordingly, they took some of the fish they'd caught and gave them to Jesus, who added them to the bread and the fish he was already cooking over a small fire. After that, they shared breakfast and fellowship together. As I thought more about this meal, several things struck me, so I'd like to share them with you. Overall, the whole incident reminds me of the parable of the prodigal son, but there are also three more specific points. Number one, the invitation came from Jesus, just as it was the prodigal son's father who rushed out to meet him and then fixed up a fantastic celebration feast. He was so glad to welcome him home. Today, unlike us, Jesus is not bound by any lockdown restrictions, so can still invite us to meet him. In the Middle East, having a meal with someone is the essence of fellowship. Of course, we cannot physically eat bread and fish or pancakes with Jesus, but we can spend time in his presence, enjoy being with him and chat with him. Quite simply, that's what prayer is. By now, you might have guessed that I have a meal motto. If in doubt, have breakfast. Perhaps I need a prayer motto too. If in doubt, join Jesus for breakfast. Second point. 
The meal was contributed to by both Jesus and his disciples. The sad thing about that parable I mentioned was that the older son neither contributed to nor participated in the family feast. However, I'm sure that most of you, like me, if we get invited out for a meal, take a small contribution, either to the meal itself or for the food cupboard of our host. This meal, too, was not just one-sided. Jesus had already started the fire and was roasting some fish by the time the disciples handed over some of their freshly caught fish. True, Jesus had helped them find that amazing catch, but then they were happy to contribute from it. That's also like prayer. Contributions and participation from both sides, although I have to confess that too often I tend to dominate the conversation and don't always listen to what the Lord might want to say to me. In reality, we all know that meals and fellowship are both better for being shared. But that's exactly what we're missing at the moment, isn't it? And my third point is this. After the actual meal, Jesus had something special to say to one of those disciples who was sharing this time with him, Peter. Jesus gave Peter the opportunity to state three times that he loved him. <clears throat> in contrast to the three times Peter had earlier denied him. I wonder if that was why Peter had jumped out of the boat. Was he anxious to put things right with his Lord before the other disciples arrived? Quite possibly. But in the end, it all happened in front of them. Embarrassing, but exciting and encouraging too. Of course, this didn't turn the clock back for Peter any more than the prodigal son could undo the years he had wasted. Nothing can do that. But it did enable Peter to move forward into the future in real fellowship with Jesus. Then I got to wondering, perhaps Jesus also had some special messages for the other disciples. Although, of course, John doesn't record any. Maybe. What I do know is that when, like Peter, we accept Jesus' invitation, it provides an opportunity for us to discover whatever special things he has in store for us. In Revelation 3.20 it says, Jesus himself says, If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. So, who's for pancakes with Jesus? I'll bring the maple syrup. See you there. <laughs>